organizers talk about outbreak systems and environmental protection. So today, uh, actually, I am working in the plant microbe interactions and also the uh, biofertilizers. But today, I decided to give a talk about biochar. It's uh, advanced technology. And I will talk about uh, how it's uh, the uh, several questions uh, will be answered that is biochar is biochar is um, uh, useful for agricultural production when we are uh, when we are producing organic uh, agriculture or eco, uh, eco friendly uh, foods or or and uh, how we use it in different uh, 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 conditions which is faced with um, abiotic stresses so if you see that agriculture and food security is very uh, now uh, especially in covid-19 we face uh, different kind different challenges and uh, up to now presently 2.6 billion people depends directly on agriculture and about uh, we know that about uh, more than 50% land is degraded uh, which is uh, used for agriculture and most of countries are facing drought in salinity, especially in Central Asia, also African countries, in also including Uzbekistan. We have um, uh, RLC, even RLC is dried up. Uh, and then uh, about uh, 40, it seemed, according to the recent statistics, 74% of poor directly affected by, uh, by land degradation globally. If you see these numbers, uh, food and food security is main issue in the world now, because especially we uh, see is it's very we feel it in COVID nineteen. Uh, the, this number says that uh, before uh, early twenty uh, this early this year, uh, one hundred five million people facing crisis level of hunger. But uh, late, lately uh, by end of this year. It could be in, uh, 265 million people, especially in low and middle income countries. So it means we have to uh, produce more food and without disturbing environment. Uh, this, uh, if you see the, the, this scene uh, here, most of affected countries uh, located in Africa and Middle East, and 36 countries in Africa because uh, this uh, region is facing climate change, uh, especially drought and salinity. So uh, the, in such areas, we need some new approaches uh, to develop some biofertilizers or to use some technology to produce organic uh, foods, especially uh, organic agriculture is the main issue in such areas, for example, even uh, only in Uzbekistan, for example, because of uh, high salt content in many regions, we cannot use any more fertilizers, chemicals. Therefore, it's, uh, we are trying, our government is also trying to use organic, uh, uh, some uh, technology and biofertilizers. There are, uh, there are the industrial agriculture system relying on the intensive use of uh, chemical inputs but I will talk about eco-friendly agriculture. Uh, we know eco-friendly agriculture, uh, for example, by fertilizers like uh, uh, microbial inoculants, very widely used by pesticides, by stimulators. But in this talk, I will talk about biochar. And not all countries using biochar, but it has um, a lot of uh, benefits. And uh, when we are designing agri organic agriculture, we, of course, we uh, management, uh, we will manage of biological processes is using natural resources. So biochar means that the use of organic waste. And in this way, we can uh, care and protect environment and also improve the, uh, uh, not only uh, pl uh, improve plant productivity, but also improve environmental health, health and soil fertility. What is the biochar? In many countries, biochar is not used, even Central Asia. So uh, first, we, I, uh, I began this project five years ago in Germany, uh, in uh, collaboration with Malaysian countries, Malaysia and Indonesia. The, it's a uh, biochar is like, uh, we call it um, terra preta. This uh, fertile anthropogenic dark earths. It's um, when deposited many years 
uh, these bones in organic ways, it's easily polluted, and then it will become uh, very rich in carbon and it's fertile. So how we, it will, uh, uh, this technology works? It's uh, like charcoal made from any organic waste. We can use some, um, uh, some roots or any agriculture uh, waste after biogas production or any things like uh, the industrial waste also, which is organic. And uh, we, this, it can be uh, processed with a low temperature or high temperature through pyrolysis. And if you see that when we are using biomass like manure, organic wastes, it will go uh, if there is a carbon 100% after pyrolysis, for example, 50% carbon is going to in, as energy to industry and about 50% uh, is ret returned back to soil as biochar. That is the, the input of more carbon, uh, which will uh, the maintain the soil fertility. And there is um, uh, proved so many beneficial effects or beneficial uh, properties proved in many reports, uh, especially uh, in how uh, last five years, there is so many reports on biochar uh, benefits like uh, biochar, first of all, improve so, uh, soil uh, water holding capacity. So therefore it's very good to use in dry areas and uh, improve soil aggregation and increase a stable carbon in soil that it will, uh, it, it means that it will increase uh, soil microbial activity and also diversity. And soil, uh, like uh, soil enzymes or soil microbial biomass and also stimulated uh, plant growth like uh, through improving root system and through improving uh, plant available nutrients. And also the, the sum of biochar types is suppress pathogens. If you see the, if we see the market, uh, how is mark, mark this is biochar market? If you see from the last five, uh, from 2015, it's increasing rapidly. So uh, this year, 2020, we, uh, so if you see that uh, until uh, 2025 or more, it's a US, uh, USD in millions. And most of uh, uh, part of this, uh, uh, this biochar market is uh, belong to Asia Pacific. So therefore we had a very close cooperation with Malaysia. They have so many different uh, companies producing biochar is already, already marketing. Uh, the, uh, the properties of biochar, so it will, uh, biochar has rich in some nutrients like potassium, phosphorus, nitrogen, but it depends uh, uh, the production technology and pyrolysis temperature. Because some biochar, for example, if this uh, biochar produced by uh, hydrothermal carbonization using 210 degree. So if you see that it has a high carbon or, or pH is low and uh, the uh, nitrogen is higher, but in the wood uh, biochar, biochar produced from wood, uh, then it has also high carbon and um, a very high uh, potassium or uh, phosphorus uh, content. Of course, these nutrients will uh, improve uh, soil uh, nutrients and also nutrient cycle. So uh, uh, now uh, we will uh, see the whole biochar increase or improve or effect on seed germination. We mainly work with legumes. Of course, we are working also with tomato, with other crops, or uh, biochar can be used in uh, hydroponics or greenhouses and different uh, um, uh, in even uh, open field. But it will be in our uh, experience uh, the, uh, the this seed germination, for example, not only soybean, but different kinds of also legumes is improved after biochar application. If you see about uh, 20 or 30%, we get high uh, uh, germination of uh, some uh, seeds like soybean or the other uh, lentil or uh, other lupin, other uh, legumes. And the uh, next question will be how's effect on plant growth? 
the similar effect we also uh, it's also published and similar effect we saw in lentil and uh, some other lupin uh, chickpea also and here in a, it's a normal uh, uh, condition irrigated soil without stress here we used for example uh, the biochar application depends on biochar types for example there is the three kind of biochar used like uh, it's different this maize uh, produced from maize it's produced from uh, the root and also we tested uh, the percentage of application for example in all in, all in soybean case the two percent of biochar application was uh, best to increase the uh, root and shoot grow of soybean but however hydrochar showed significant difference so it means hydrochar, the biochar produced with lower temperature, 200, around 200, maybe keep uh, nutrients and also uh, make available nutrients for plants. Next question is uh, uh, the drought conditions. So we used, we, our question was the, is biochar, can biochar improve the plant grow under drought? or compared to irrigated conditions. So we can reduce the biochar under drought condition. So if you see here, we also used here two type biochar, like uh, from root and from the maize. And if you see here, irrigated conditions, and uh, here is drought conditions, shoot and root grow of chickpea. The significant difference uh, compared to control we saw in the under drought conditions. And also the, that is a plant growth and especially root systems. And the root systems and nodulation is, uh, uh, to compared to control, nodulation is high after biochar application. So it means that the biochar is, uh, can be used under drought condition and benefit is much higher under drought condition to compare normal uh, irrigated condition. So it's a it's very good technology to use it because of its uh, properties like its uh, uh, holding uh, water holding capacity is uh, maintaining soil moisture. So the next question will be why it's increasing uh, nodulation. The way uh, that is if you see the uh, some benefits on uh, uh, biological nitrogen fixation. It's um, biochar, as I told, that it has uh, nutrients and it's very good um, uh, the, uh, uh, the niche uh, for uh, bacteria. They are uh, for nutrients, they can colonize, they can survive inside the biochar. And uh, therefore, its uh, rhizobium survival will be higher in the uh, uh, biochar pores and it will uh, form nodules. And of course, it, uh, through that uh, increasing uh, nodulation, and also it will increase uh, nitrogen fixation. If you see that here, for example, we also uh, tested the survival of rhizobia in biochar pores. If you see that they are hiding in, inside the pores, it means that when we are applying, even for example, bacterial inoculants, if we are using this biochar as substrate, we are mixing this rhizobia with other PGPR inoculant. So when we are applying uh, under drought conditions, so biochar will uh, protect the uh, microbes longer term. And then uh, after when it is, when plants or seed is, uh, uh, when, when first root system is, uh, root will begin to grow in it, the bacteria can colonize and survive in the root system. It is one of the mechanisms of the uh, Biochar improve uh, uh, nodule number and colonization of the bacteria in the root system. The here we um, also saw the if biochar is also can be applied in the salt affected lands. We use uh, salt tolerant plant like lycorrhizae. It's also legume. Uh, it's uh, widely uh, grown in salt affected lands. So if you see here also a shoot and root system, uh, the non-saline uh, normal condition and it's abiotic stress condition like salt affected. It's, um, uh, so if you see the here, uh, we used, uh, again, we used two, four, six percent biochar. The, if you compare with control plants, biochar is increasing the plant growth. Uh, 
um, it means that this biochar also can uh, the uh, for example uh, we we i showed as i showed you the ph of biochar uh, is lower in this uh, uh, the type of biochar so it means it this can it can be uh, maintain some um, adequate some environment for microbes or uh, root system uh, to uh, the uh, the mitigate salt stress in the soil if you see here we uh, screen the uh, uh, this uh, lacquerates uh, the root system architecture this control if you we compare this control non uh, saline condition so if you see two and four percent it increase increasing root architecture root system it means the root system uh, root, the root of plant is getting more nutrients from the soil or in the hydroponic system and here is uh, control uh, under salt stress also the biochar increase uh, root system under salt stress through for example uh, keeping or maintaining more uh, microbial survival or giving uh, more nutrients in the uh, uh, mesia that the root can uh, plant root can get more uh, nutrients and the uh, uh, root system will stimulate and here uh, we see that but we have to also give attention that some biochar types is um, effect on uh, plant some plant uh, pathogens for example in our case the three kind of biochar used to see the effect of biochar on the lupin if we saw that this um, biochar like uh, uh, produced from root with using 600 degree temperature is uh, increasing uh, disease incidence so then uh, our uh, but uh, this hydrochar is decreasing the uh, disease incidence so in this, we conclude that uh, we, when we are uh, using biochar or producing biochar, it's very uh, important to check uh, their effect on plant growth and plant the pathogens in the soil or uh, disease incidence. And also we uh, use uh, field experiments in the loamy sand soil. Uh, we wanted to see if the uh, if we uh, very big uh, field areas can be used biochar and do we see the effect or not because previous um, experiments was done in uh, greenhouse experiments so field location was in germany and we biochar was applied 10 ton per hectare and we use again uh, inoculation rhizobia and control without rhizobial inoculation uh, the 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 field trials uh, was um, uh, 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 conducted in April through October with soybean. If you see here, the, uh, for example, plant dry weight is increased in irrigated and under drought condition. But however, the drought condition uh, biochar showed a significant difference with control and also yield increased uh, under drought condition. It means that the under uh, the irrigated conditions already is good uh, for plant growth so it means uh, biochar is uh, has a more benefit in under drought condition because we saw that uh, to even the plant biomass also uh, the yield increased only uh, under drought condition and here you see control and the uh, biochar applied uh, uh, plants it as i uh, showed the previous slides that biochar increase nodulation uh, the colonization of rhizobia in the root system so it means when we are mixing uh, the soil with biochar and applying the bacteria rhizobial inoculants so biochar can uh, maintain and protect and to keep uh, survival of the rhizobia in them and this rhizobia can uh, result more nodulation and also it uh, 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 resulted in good uh, plant biomass and yield. Here, uh, the, I show you the nodule number per plant in the field uh, condition. This uh, control of biochar is the nodulation is increased. Also, uh, in the rain fed uh, under low condition, also the, uh, uh, we see the uh, slight increase of nodule numbers. But, however, legomoglobin content was uh, not changed. 
And uh, are, uh, here we uh, also show the is uh, the biological effect on soil biological activity. And we, uh, we also uh, see the found that biochar is increasing microbial uh, community in diversity in the soil, also soil enzymes. Here also we see alkaline phosphonic strata increased uh, uh, in the irrigated condition after biochar application. It means some enzymes it can uh, be increased, can be improved <coughs> after application of biochar. And of course, it, they will maintain soil fertility. Then we try to uh, study the mechanism of action. For example, <coughs> how biochar uh, increase the root system and also the soil fertility. Uh, here, uh, this, again, we study with uh, a soybean. After a, a biochar application, uh, the in, uh, pot, uh, to compare with control uh, uh, control soil, the, if you see the biochar increase microbial uh, diversity. So then uh, biochar uh, when after application we uh, uh, microbial activities, and then, uh, but in control soil if you see it, we have uh, uh, we identify less diversity. Uh, uh, Oh, and we, uh, in this conclusion, uh, the short conclusion would be that biochar application can be used under different uh, conditions. But however, under drought and south affected lands, uh, the benefits more visible. And also, it will uh, biochar uh, will increase the plant growth, plant root system, and the nutrient uptake and the stress tolerance of plants to drought and uh, south stress. And also the biochar is, um, uh, the effect biochar also can be explained by indirect effect. For example, it's uh, increasing microbial activity and microbial bar activity or plant growth, promoting rhizobic when diverse, they're uh, increasing the plant growth. And also uh, biochar improve the symbiotic performance of rhizobia with legumes under different uh, uh, abiotic stress conditions. And then through that, uh, the yield uh, will increase. And in the end, biochar decreased the demand for chemical nitrogen fertilizers, enhanced, enhanced the ecosystem service in the different uh, soils in sustainable way. Thank you for your attention. So I hope the many countries, this biochar technology will increase in many countries and we will ensure that organic agriculture and ecological safe food for a whole population and we will protect the environment. Thank you very much.